Well, thank you so much for having me and for letting me go first uh, or second, but early on. Um, and I'm from Philly too, Gail. So we have that Philly connection. <laughs> um, but what I actually chose was a wooden spoon. And I don't know if those of you can, if you can see the poster for Lives Well Live back there. Um, this is my grandmother's wooden spoon and my grandmother and I cook together. And um, this is definitely, uh, she my, was my inspiration and my inspiration for the film, but definitely my role model in life. Um, she, I started filmmaking because um, she never wrote a recipe down. All of you that are good cooks, you never write recipes down. I know that. And the only way that I was going to remember how to cook what she did was to video her. And that led to a feature film that's now on PBS where I interviewed 40 people that were 75 and older and um, wanted to know more about their lives. So that's why I've kept the spoon. You can see it's totally worn and burned. Um, but every time when I cook, I use it and I think of my grandmother and I feel her presence. And um, I think the third question was, what can someone learn about you through the story of this thing? I would say the thing that they could learn is that uh, anything is possible. I mean, I did a film um, out of a love of my grandmother. And I think if you're passionate about something, you can make anything happen. And the more personal the story, the more universal it becomes. And so um, I credit my grandmother with that. And I just wanna say one of her mottos was to always be kind. So um, just that's always, I always think about her all the time with that. And then um, what do you want someone to know about you? Which is the fourth question. Um, I would guess um, my passion is really doing a lot of intergenerational projects now because of the film, because I had this opportunity to interview these 40 amazing people who I feel like the greatest gift my grandmother gave me was that she introduced me to 40 new grandparents. And I want other people to have that connection. Um, there are so many people that are disconnected. And one of the things that I read when I was doing the research for my film was that the last hundred years is the first time in human history that we've looked to anyone other than our elders for advice. And I really feel the world is suffering as a result. And so my, um, what I'd want you to know about me is that that's my passion is, is making intergenerational connections happen. And my new film that I'm working on now is all about how those intergenerational connections happen through food. So you can look for that coming up in a, probably a couple of years. And then what do you want to happen with this thing when you die? Um, I have a younger brother who also cooked with my grandmother in the kitchen, and I would want him to have that. So, uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. can, I ask a, can I ask a super quick question? Do, I wonder if you still use the spoon when you cook, or is it like on a shelf somewhere? Oh, no, no, I use it. My grandmother would want me to use it. It's well Excellent. worn, and I feel like my grandma's juju comes out in whatever I make when I cook with it. So I feel like you know, that's the beauty of it is that it's meant to be used. And, and I feel her presence every time that I use it. So I'm, I'm not one of those people that keeps things on a shelf. I like to enjoy them. I think life is meant to be enjoyed. And it's for me more about, you know, this is about the thing, but it's really about the experiences. When we look back on our life, these things remind us of experiences and that's why we love them so much. And so for me, I mean, I can still picture myself in my grandmother's kitchen using the spoon and stirring the pot with her. 